Pleasant Grove football with Gary Cherry and Coach Johnny Toombs. Brought to you by Athletic Supply, Davis Shoes, Luther Bells, Jimmy Cobb Insurance, Texacana Athletic Club, Regency House, McGuire Sound, Photomation, Coca-Cola Bottling Company, or Chevrolet, Texacana Immediate Care, Raffaele Realty, Hunter Power Saw, American National Bank, White's Glenwood House, Pepsi Cola Bottling Company, Hopkins Econo Mart, Teachers Credit Union, Daily Fence Company, Ramblin' Rose Forest, and Tony Wiltshire Company. Welcome to Pleasant Grove Hawk Football with Athletic Director and Head Football Coach Johnny Toombs. Last Friday night, Pleasant Grove journeyed to Hooks, Texas and found that Hooks uh, were able to get six turnovers in the ball game and come on with a 35-8 to win, Johnny, in a very important game that uh, Hooks, of course, with the experience that they have over the years, Pleasant Grove looking for a possible playoff berth, but things happen, the turnovers seem to be the key to the game. Well, we, we, of all the things that we listed all week long that we had to do and could not do, well, you know, the turnover was the big thing and uh, something we hadn't done in three weeks, but uh, we can't explain why turnovers happen, they just do, but we had the six turnovers and Hooks was able to score early on us and we got ourselves in a position that we just couldn't dig our way out of or scratch our way out of and, and you know, we must give Hooks credit, they are a very fine football team and, and last Friday night the best team probably won and it's a, it's a disappointment, but uh, the thing that we want to reach back and grab hold of is that we're just so thankful that we had the opportunity to be around and play in a ball game of that magnitude, and I know it's going to be a great growing experience for our football team. The total offense for both teams was not that much difference, but again, the turnovers seem to be the key, and of course, the experience of, uh, of uh, Hooks, who have for years have made in the playoffs a number of times over the years, but uh, really the turnovers was the key. The turnovers were the key to the, to the ball game. Hook's quickness was a very big factor in the ball game. They're much quicker than our youngsters are. Uh, we felt like that, uh, you know, we had to play a near-perfect football game to play with a team as good as Hook's. We've done that a time or two in the last two or three weeks. But the turnovers got us in the hole. We had to get out of our game plan, do some things that we don't do as well as we, as we do others. And it, it just kind of mushroomed on us. The first half was very similar to the Jefferson ball game. And at halftime, we told our youngsters we couldn't do anything about the first half. We wanted to win the second half, and we did play much better in the second half, which is a tribute to our ball club. But, but it was just the turnover factor and the quick scores just kind of got us down. Still, the uh, offense for uh, Pleasant Grove rushing, uh, Tony Wiltshire had 25 carries for 86 yards. And really, their big man, Curtis Gooden, had 17 carries for 68. So you held him less than 100 yards. We didn't do a bad job on Curtis Gooden. And he is a great football player. Uh, been around this league for quite a while now. And uh, you know, speculation is that he may be the best since Billy Sims. And I certainly think I agree with that. Uh, Curtis Gooden is an outstanding football player. And, we stopped him from the line of scrimmage fairly well. Uh, I don't think he caught any passes. He had a big pass interception that set up a score. But, but uh, you know, I'd like to reemphasize that uh, our youngsters played hard. They wanted to win. They were ready to play. Uh, we just uh, self-destructed a little bit early, and uh, I'm disappointed for the youngsters, but we're certainly not disappointed in them. They had a lot of fight in the second half, and we're trying hard right down to the wire. Hooks is just a good football team, and, and they deserve to win the ball game. Well, listen, one thing about Pleasant Grove, your players don't have to have anything to hold their head down about because, really, they've played tough all year long. They've had three shutouts. They've played some pretty good football teams in the 15 3 a so really, they don't really have anything to hold their head down about. Well, we've played uh, two poor football games in the nine weeks we've played so far, which for a high school football team is not bad at all. But unfortunately, we chose probably the two best teams on our schedule to have our poorest games against, of course, in Jefferson and Hooks. And uh, they're both outstanding teams, and we have to line up and play air-free football to win. You know, we, we've proven that over the, over the weeks. But, but I think our youngsters accomplished a lot more than most people gave them credit for. I don't think anyone suspected early in the summer that the Pleasant Grove Hooks ball game would have playoff, uh, you know, indications at all. And, we have another big game left on our schedule, and I have every confidence that our youngsters are going to bounce back again and finish up the season on a winning note. We're going to see the first half of action, but first, these messages. 
You know, giving yourself a gift for the home sure makes a lot of sense these days, especially when you have to watch your budget like Deborah and I do. It's really the only practical thing to do at Christmas time. Our new dining group is already here for us to enjoy now, through the holidays and for years to come. So when you American National Bank is your full-service bank. For your convenience, our drive through windows open from 7.30 to 6 weekdays and 9 till noon on Saturdays. As the financial leader in Northwest Texarkana, American National Bank offers interest-bearing checking accounts, money market accounts, IRAs, CDs, and will assist you for your mortgage loan, automobile, personal, or commercial loan. Deposit or withdraw at your convenience with Max 24. American National Bank, 2301 Richmond Road, member FDIC. A drink's delightful the second time. <laughs> Hi. Do you remember the first time you tried... Kiss, kiss, kissing? Oof. But now... <laughs> and when you first tried Coke, I bet you said, uh-uh, not for me. But hey, let's not let first impressions swim. Yes. And let's try Coke, Coke, Coke again, shall we? Because once you've acquired that new wave taste, you're going to want to try it again, again, and again. A <laughs> Coke's delightful the second... Catchy, isn't it? Catch the wave. Coke. Right. Beautiful football weather for Pasty Crowd at Hooks, Texas. It was a tremendous crowd. I'm sure it was the largest crowd the Hawks have ever played in front of, Gary. And, and the youngsters were a little tight coming out. We knew they were nervous, and we tried to relax them. But uh, we probably played uh, very tentatively at least the first uh, quarter of the ball game. But the Henderson State University band from Arkadelphia, Arkansas, was there. And Hooks had a lot of festivities before the game. We had spent a lot of time in the dressing room. and. And we were nervous and very tight. And, of course, there again, it was our first time to be in this situation, and, and Hooks had been there before. But we won the toss and elected to receive. We wanted to play ball control. We sure didn't want to kick the ball off of them. And you think of the worst two things that can happen to you to start a ball game, and that's exactly what happened. On the first play, we line up and try to run the blast that we've run for weeks without fumbling, and the ball squirts away and Hooks recovers. And then on the very next play, we knew it was coming, but uh, they just executed it very well, and we had the man pretty well covered, but it was a touchdown on the very first play. So with, I think, 19 seconds gone in the ball game, we're behind 7-0. Hooks comes back and uh, kicks off again. Trace Warren feels the kick, gets us pretty good field position. And uh, we're going to come up and you know try to run the blast, try to establish the run. We run Wilshire inside and then outside and uh, we don't make the third down conversion on third and five so Kenny Davis punts the ball away and Hooks is going to start on their end of the field. Steve Cullen and uh, John Hodges covering on the punt. Mike Hicks plays, uh, uh, I believe one of the Hicks boys plays fullback for him. Of course that's Curtis Gooden right there. They do everything back and and uh, we did a pretty good job on him, but then when we got concerned about good and outside, well, there's Hooks inside, and this was the way the night went. We thought we had the ball, but it squirted away, and Hooks came up with the football, and this is good and to the left, and you can see the Hawks are there in pretty good shape, but it, it just takes a bunch of us to bring him down. He's a very strong youngster, even though he's not that large. And we have white shirts all around again. He gets down to about the two-yard line, and then on the next play, he carries in, and it's... It's 14 to nothing after the conversion, and it's, and it's early, and, and we're in trouble with our backs to the wall. Well, Curtis is good, and uh, he accelerates once he gets the football, and it's pretty impossible to get him down. Well, he's a, he's a very frightening individual to line up and play against, and you know we had to make our youngsters be concerned about him. This is a great pass and catch here from David Fawcett to David Oliver. Uh, give us pretty good field position. We, we didn't want to panic. We wanted to line up and try to do the things that we've been doing. We, we get a pretty good drive here. We're going to get down uh, to about the, well, inside the 10-yard line. Made a few first downs and trying to build a little momentum. Uh, trying to get on the scoreboard to cut the deficit in half. We felt like we'd get it down to 14-7 to seven and, you know, give our youngsters time to get the field of the game and regroup. We, we could still be all right. A good run there. Uh, by Tony behind the, the offensive line, uh, Tommy Welch and Jerry Moody, Bill Stone, Jimmy Townsend, Mike Young doing a good job. Miss Fawcett on the pass play on the bootleg had a chance to run for the first down. Tony on the sweep to the left down to about the seven or eight yard line. 
Drill shower again dives down to about the four. And uh, we miss a block here on fourth down, and, and Hooks is able to throw us for a sack. The field goal never really crossed our mind. It was 14 to zero, and after a short discussion on the sideline, we decided 14 to three wouldn't help because we didn't know how many times we were going to be down there, and we desperately needed the touchdown. So at the end of the first quarter, it's still 14 to zero. And the Hawks are able to hang on and make uh, Hooks punt away, and they just hit a tremendous punt, and Van Morris had to retreat to field it and was just covered up in blue jerseys with no place to go. Scott Eichhorn on a quick pitch behind a good block by Mike Young. Wilshire on the sweep. Hooks forced us to do some things we didn't want to do. They pretty well stopped our blast inside, and uh, this was a pass that David was trying to throw away, and he just didn't have a good handle on it and got hit, and only great effort by Tommy Welch kept him from scoring there. But Hooks stopped our inside game and made us try to run outside, which is not uh, you know the area we'd like to go in. And then when they forced us to pass the football, we had a couple of uh, poor passes that were returned for, for near touchdowns, and it just really got us in a bad, uh, bad position throughout the contest. 21 to zero now. Uh, we're going to come out and fumble the football, uh, a little technique thing that we hadn't done all year long, and lay the ball on the ground and give Hooks excellent field position. But Van Morris intercepts this on a nice catch over the shoulder, and the Hawks are able to, to thwart this drive. Coming off our own goal line, we David Fawcett got hurt on this, incomplete pass, hurt his leg. We hope he'll be able to play next week, but he's, he's going to be uh, limping a little bit. Kenny was pressured pretty good there, still got to kick off without any trouble. A lot of pressure on Kenny. We asked him, of course, to kick the ball away from Curtis Gooden, and uh, he did. Curtis didn't, I don't believe, touched one. And uh, they come up and hit a good pass outside. Good coverage here by Steve Cullen. It's just a well-executed play. Uh, Hicks inside for a few yards. We had good defensive effort, uh, defensive tackles. Mark Hawkins and Greg Knapp did a good job. Steve Cullen, their big hit on good to knock him out of bounds. Steve had a very good ball game. Uh, linebackers hiring and uh, Todd hiring and Trace Warren and Craig Schultz. The defensive ends, Ed Zid, Mike Kyle. We blocked this, this field goal. Uh, Greg Knapp opened up a hole for Trace Warren, and Trace blocked it and couldn't find the handle on it, and then Ed Zed picked it up. We thought we might have a chance to pick it up and, and run a ways with it, but it showed a lot of character for our youngsters to, to bow up and hold hooks there like they did. It's Scott Icorn to the left side. Uh, Fawcett's hurt now, and so Oliver's in and trying to get the ball into Van Morris. He just underthrew it, and there's Gooden. You know, he's just everywhere. And, Again, Tommy Webbs hustles over to make the stop inside the five, and they're going to hit us for a touchdown pass, and it's going to be 28 to nothing before halftime. It's problems enough to try to work with Gooden while he's on offense, but if he's on defense, too, it makes a double truck. Yeah, of course, the you know the major colleges are looking at the youngster, and I, and I understand that uh, some of them, SMU or some of the Southwest Conference schools, are interested in him as a defensive back even, so he is, you know, he's just a fine football player. Uh, it's Tony on a good run behind some good blocking by our offensive line. Uh, tight ends. Uh, uh, let's see, that'd be Kenny Davis now because Fawcett is hurt and Oliver's a quarterback and also Chad Davis. He come up and try to throw the screen and their defensive line from the opposite side, one of their defensive two techniques were over there. They're just extremely quick. And of course, that's the kind of ball club that's given us trouble over the years is the ones with all that quickness. And, we try a long pass right before halftime, incomplete, and scores 28 to zero at halftime. Four turnovers in that first half, Johnny. Certainly gave Hooks the advantage, and with uh, good field position in that first half, their four touchdowns certainly made the difference. A ball control offense like ours and a, a, a defensive-oriented team like ours that needs to play, uh, you know, field position just can't afford to do those things, and it's, it's things that we haven't done in a long time, and. And we won several ball games by not having those type of errors, and we just can't line up and play with a good football team like Hooks and do those things and expect to win. I noticed Curtis Gooden, uh, certainly his speed, once he accelerates with the football, but the entire team that Hooks has has speed. Well, they're very quick. Their defensive linemen are quick, uh, probably quicker than our running backs. And uh, we felt like that we had a good game plan to offset that quickness, to line up and run right at them where they couldn't use their quickness. but. But they, they uh, did a good job inside. We want to give them credit for that. And then when we fell behind, it's awfully hard to, to line up and blast and run inside and, and be patient enough to try to score that many points against a good defense. 
With a score twenty eight nothing at halftime, do you try to, to uh go with the players with some maybe some game plan changes or do you try to stay with the same basics? Well the main thing we were concerned about at, at halftime was the attitude of the youngsters. Uh really I was very concerned about their feelings. It was obvious at halftime we weren't gonna win the football game. Uh we tried to plead with the youngsters to come out with a lot of character and a lot of pride that they'd always exhibited and to be patient. We wanted to play the second half like it was zero to zero and not come out and fill the ball, uh, fill the air with footballs and trying to pass and, and do things like that. And we did win the second half, eight to seven, for what it's worth. Uh, to the average fan, that doesn't mean much, but with the pride that we have and the respect we have for our football players, it meant an awful lot because hook starters were in there until four or five minutes to go in the ball game, and, and we thought it showed a lot of class and character on our youngsters point uh, part to come in and play that hard the second half and we never quit they played to the final whistle well certainly uh, Pleasant Grove deserved to be where they are because they've played tough all year long they play with a lot of heart they've out sometimes you might think they've outplayed themselves but really they just lined up and played good football and sometimes you get a few things go against you and it can uh, come back to haunt you. Of course, that was Halloween last Friday night, and that might have been the problem. The spooks and goblins might have gotten us. I tell you, I'm not real sure that our youngsters are not overachievers. Uh, they, they play so hard. They want to so bad. They certainly play within just uh, every ounce of their abilities. And uh, I don't think it's a farce or uh, ridiculous on our part to think that we deserve to be in a playoff football game Friday night. We deserve to have a chance to play in the playoffs or to play a game that could mean uh, have playoff uh, intentions. But uh, Hooks was the best football team. Uh, they were better than we were Friday night, especially the way we played. And we're not ashamed of anything that we've done this year. We're disappointed in our performance. But, but our youngsters uh, certainly deserve uh, all the attention that they've gotten the past few weeks, and we're very proud of them. We've got a lot of action coming your way for this last half. But first, these messages. Some real estate agents have only one sales tool, and even though they keep hammering away with it, they don't always get the results you'd hope for. But our company has a comprehensive home marketing system with a very simple benefit. It works. Better Homes and Gardens, the better way to sell your home. For a free, no-obligation home market analysis, call Raffaele Realtor 794-3322, also displaying homes for sale or lease at our new office in Central Mall. I found almost all of the special gifts I'll give this year in this brochure from Luther Bells. There's a diamond drop on a rope chain for my sister and the gold coin ring that our daughter Kathy's been hoping for. Then for my husband, I found a really elegant diamond and nugget ring I know he'll love. And I might even drop a hint to him about that magnificent cluster diamond ring that looked like it belonged on my finger. Luther Bells has something for everyone, 85 Central Mall. Daily Fence Company, serving Texarkana with quality in the board and chain fencing business, now offers cloth awnings at an unbelievable price. For patios, storefronts, even windows, enhance the beauty of your home or business with durable awnings. Regulate the warmth and brilliance of the sun with a wide variety of colors and styles to choose from. Call today. Free estimates are planning service. Satisfaction is guaranteed. Cloth awnings, now at Daily Fence Company. Call 838-7892. For quite some time now, we've been telling you that Orr Chevrolet beats them all. Now, we guarantee it. Orr Chevy in Texarkana will beat any advertised price on any new Chevrolet car or truck. That simply means that you're sure to get the best deal at Orr Chevrolet. Just bring us any ad for any dealer anywhere in the Arklatex, and Orr Chevy will beat that advertised price. Now, more than ever, at Orr Chevrolet, we beat them all. Second half action, we'll see the Pleasant Grove Hawk kicking off to the Hornets from Hooks, Texas. The hey, Hornets uh, will receive the kickoff, and you know we told the youngsters at halftime that we need to go out and act like it's zero to zero and, and see if our character and pride won't pull us through. We didn't want another 28 points scored on us. And, uh, my kicks here on the kickoff return just almost broke it. We finally chased him out of bounds, and Hooks uh, sets up in very good field position, but the the Hawk defense looked a little more like themselves here in this in this quarter, and uh, Steve Cullen was able to get over there and defend that pass and, and get good pass rush from Mike Kyles and David David Oliver and a great interception there by Trace Warren, cut in front of the receiver and made a good uh, interception. 
It's Scott Eichhorn on the run, picks up seven or eight yards. We're trying to establish our running game. Here's Todd Hiring behind a good block by Eichhorn and Jerry Moody. Uh, Wilshire to the right. Going to start moving the ball a little bit, but I believe this drive's going to be stopped by a fumble. The ball bounces loose and hooks is right there, and, and here come the Hornets again. But Gooden on the option is going to be knocked loose from the ball, and we're going to get it right back. They had two turnovers in the ball game, one interception, one fumble, Hooks did. And, uh, of course, the Hawks had many more than that, and that was a, a very decisive factor in the game. Another good punt by Kenny Davis. He really turned this one over, and it was through the end zone. And of course, here comes Gooden and company right back at us, but uh, we played much better uh, in the second half. Uh, Hicks breaks loose here, and John Daly had to run him out of bounds. On the option play, we had it pretty well defensed, and uh, Greg Knapp makes that tackle from behind. And uh, here's Hicks inside, and I tell you, Hicks inside and Gooden outside is, is really a, a powerful duo. And We locked him up there, thought we had him tackled, and he broke loose and picked up some yardage. Good tackle there, Van Morris and Todd Hiring. We're going to let him get away here, but uh, Hooks is going to be called for holding, I believe, on that play. And they come up and throw the pass incomplete. Good coverage by Van Morris. And then on the option, Steve Cullen chasing him, and David Oliver cuts him back inside and going to force him as we're going to the fourth quarter to a long yardage situation. But it's just a well executed pass here. Uh, Van Mars in pretty good position, but uh, Thomas is able to come back on the play, four hooks and make the catch, and it's 35 to zero. And uh, the Hawks, there again, really, really bowed their neck and got their heads up and stayed in the ball game, and we're going to get a touchdown here in this quarter. Steve Cullen on the kickoff return. Fawcett still at quarterback, pitches to Wilshire, and I tell you, Gary, there was really some hard hitting going on this ball game. Both teams have some players bunged up and off his sore. That was just a great catch by David Fawcett or David Oliver. Uh, he bobbled the ball a little while and tipped it and then caught it and came down with a good pass catch and ran there on the keeper to get it down uh, fairly close. And this is Wilshire inside the 10, uh, hammering down inside the 5. And this is a very good run here by Tony for the touchdown. Uh, we decided to go to for two. We had a play we wanted to look at and bootleg back and Kenny Davis makes a nice catch on the pass from Oliver, so it's 35 to 8. Kickoff is short. We were Brian Baker did a good job on the kickoff. He kicked the ball where we wanted him to. We we didn't want to kick the ball deep to Gooden because it's just uh, virtually impossible to expect to, to keep him from breaking all night long on kicks. John Daly again chasing Gooden out of bounds. Uh, Mike Kyle's in on that tackle along with David Oliver. Uh, Steve Farquhar hops on there and makes a tackle and rides the runner down. Greg Knapp chases him away here and finally brought down by Paul Ubrey. Uh, now Hooks begins to substitute a little bit. There's about four minutes to go in the ball game, and uh, they lost quite a bit of yardage in this last few series, but the Hawks are still battling, still playing hard, and forced the punt. And then when we get the ball, we start to put some of our second uh, group in and let some seniors and some youngsters play that haven't been in yet. Todd Martin quarterbacking right now, uh, pitched it to Wilshire, Mason Peebles, down the field blocking, and here's our last turnover. We miss a handle on the blast, and, and Hooks gets the football. Uh, Jeff White makes a good play there to cut the ball back inside to the pursuit. Uh, good play there by Knapp. Uh, Eric Monty's in the ball game at linebacker, and on the last play of the game, the quarterback for Hooks fell on the ball, and final score is 35 to 8. Well, Hooks certainly taking advantage early in the ball game of the turnovers and their good field position, like we mentioned earlier, went on and uh, quickly got the 28 points in the first half, which is really all they needed. But it really shows that sometimes when you get turnovers early in the game like that and you get the momentum on your side, no mo can go a long way, plus having home field advantage. Well, uh, Coach Thornton, I know, expressed the same feelings that I did. We felt like it was very important for us to control the football, especially in the first half and get down the field and maybe get on the scoreboard first. And every minute that we felt like would, would go by in a close ball game, we would gain confidence. And I noticed in the paper that uh, uh, Royce Thornton, their, their coach, said that he felt like it was very important for them to score early, which they were able to do. And it just entirely changed the complexion of the football game. This particular win by Hooks last uh, Friday night certainly brings about a complete uh, complex uh, situation in the 15-3A, and you've got uh, the records there of the top teams in the 15-3A. Yeah, I do, and it's not really as exciting as it was 
this time last week when the Hawks still had a shot at the playoffs. We are out of the playoff picture now. Uh, Lennon Kildare is in first place with five and one. DeKalb and Hooks are second with four wins, one loss, and one tied. And Hugh Springs is four and two. And, uh, you know, the matchmakers, the schedule came out pretty good this week, but Lyndon plays DeKalb at DeKalb. Hooks plays Hugh Springs at uh, Hugh Springs, and all four of the teams still have a chance at the playoffs. If uh, Hooks beats Hugh Springs and Lyndon beats DeKalb, the Hawks can finish in third place, Gary, if we take care of our business in New Boston. And I think, there again, I think that's a fine tribute to our youngsters to, uh, to finish in third. Um, if it doesn't work out like that and, and we should, uh, uh, you know, go ahead and beat New Boston, we can finish, I think, tied for fourth is maybe the worst we can finish. So it looks like we're going to be in the first division. We do have a winning record. Uh, the youngsters uh, don't want the 5-4-1, and one, though. They want to win this week and finish up 6-3-1, and one, which would be a pretty good season for us. Without any doubt, it shows a lot of uh, character uh, with your team in the uh, third year as a high school. And uh, the fact that uh, this year they've been competing and have been in every ball game, winning five so far, and a chance to finish 6-3-1, and one, that's to me, really remarkable for a third-year high school. Well, I think our fans and those of us that are familiar with our program realize what a difficult journey it's been. It's, uh, I guess, kind of like a baby. We had to crawl at first, and, and you know, now we, we got up on our feet, and, and you know, at times we were really uh, able to run and, and, you know, do good things, and we got ourselves in a position to have the great season, and, and that's the thing that's so satisfying to us. We got in a position where we could end up first or second in the conference. We didn't quite make it, but those 19 seniors that uh, helped to get us there, and I might add the seniors the year before, uh, I think that they've helped us to, to finish the foundation for our program, and I think it, that uh, you know the, the group next year can take this and build on it, and hopefully we're on our own two feet and on our way up now. Well, there's not any doubt about that, because with the possibility to finish 6-3-1, uh, certainly your coaching staff and uh, I know your players and your your faculty and your fans certainly have a lot to be holding their head about. They don't have to really hold their head down at all because Hooks, in many years, they have been playing high school ball and have had some pretty good teams over the past, and this one's another good team. Well, they are a good football team, and, and our, our uh, sub-varsity level teams have done well. Our JV's having a good year. Our ninth grade's doing well. Our eighth grade's a good, strong group, and uh, we feel like our future's still ahead of us, and we're just... You know, there again, we're so thankful that we had a chance to line up and play in a game like this because playing in a pressure ball game like this is like winning. You have to win to learn how to win, and now we've done that. And you have to be under pressure and be under the gun in a ball game like this to know how to react. Now, if we can get back in this same position next year, I think our youngsters will handle it a lot better than we did last Friday night. We'll have a final comment about next week's ball game, but first, these messages. Okay, Jonathan. We're sending you back in time. Before television, radio, even before soft drinks. Careful. Anything you do could change history. Mom's the word. Activate time travel mode to the year 1885. He's there. Hey, where's my Pepsi? <laughs> it's... Oh, no. He took it. Relax, Smith. What could 12 ounces of Pepsi possibly change? Yeah. What could happen? <laughs> Pepsi, the choice of a new generation. In a world of ordinary mowers, tough customers look for the extraordinary, which isn't easy to find, until you come to Aaron's. Aaron's gives you variable speed control, folding handlebars, more bagging capacity, and more years of service. Aaron's makes being tough. Crazy. Aaron's, the easy choice for tough customers. Available at Hunter Power Saw Company, 4810 West 7th, Highway 67, Texarkana. Tony Wiltshire and all the folks at Tony Wiltshire Company hope you're enjoying these Pleasant Grove Hawks telecasts each week. Thus far in 1986, our Hawks have shown the courage and spirit so necessary to the building of an outstanding football program. Congratulations to Coach Johnny Toons, to all of the Hawks coaching staff, and of course to the Pleasant Grove Hawks on their victories this year. Know too that we're with you all the way, regardless of the outcome of each game. Get those tickets. Come out and support the Pleasant Grove Hawks football team in 1986. Next Friday night, Pleasant Grove will be traveling to New Boston to finish his 1986 football season. And, John, there are going to be 19 players that will be playing their last football game for Pleasant Grove. Yeah, and it's going to be an emotional game for those 19 players, as it will for New Boston. It is the last game for both teams, of course. And uh, we're going to miss those 19 seniors very much. And we want to help them to end their career on a good note. We want to end up with a good taste in our mouth. 
Uh, New Boston is winless this year, but they're going to be a very hungry, fired-up football team. We've got uh, Coach Fawcett and David Fawcett over here that they're going to remember very well, and, and they're going to be ready for us, and the Hawks are going to have to rebound and play well and win. Good luck, Frank, Friday night. Thank you, Gary. Speaking for Johnny Toombs, this is Gary Cherry saying join us again next week for Pleasant Grove Hawk football. Pleasant Grove football has been brought to you by... Athletic Supply, Davis Shoes, Luther Bells, Jimmy Cobb Insurance, Texarkana Athletic Club, Regency House, McGuire Sound, Photomation, Coca-Cola Bottling Company, Or Chevrolet, Texarkana Immediate Care, Raffaelli Realty, Hunter Power Saw, American National Bank, White's Glenwood House, Pepsi-Cola Bottling Company, Hopkins Economart, Teachers Credit Union, Daily Fence Company, Ramblin' Rose Forest, and Tony Wiltshire Company. Pleasant Grove Football is a production of Dimension Media Services.